This is In Boot Camp, Episode 0, The Week Before, on Saturday, January 10th, 2019, with your hosts, Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode of In Boot Camp at thenexus.tv slash IB0. Hey there, how's it going today? It's good, how about you? Good, it's the start of a new show. It's a new show, what show? We are making episode 0 of In Boot Camp. In boot camp. In boot camp. I have signed up, paid for, and enrolled, and gone through orientation for the University of Minnesota's part-time flexible coding boot camp, which is a 24-week boot camp that will make me a full developer and fully employable, allegedly. Allegedly. Well, that's why we are making this podcast. Yeah. Because we're going through, and we're going to, week by week, see what happens when you go to a full-time, part-time coding boot camp that promises you a job at the end. Yep. Um, And so, like, I uh, do a lot of interviews at work um, for my own employer and others. And, um, you know, I I feel like I have a pretty good grasp on what we're looking for um, from the uh, developers that we often see and talk to. Um, I've worked with juniors and seniors. I know the full range there. Um... I actually like doing a lot of this, like, you know, kind of re- in that, you know, realm of teaching and recruiting. I like that. Well, because right out of high school, you were a part of the community education thing for our local school district. That's right. Um, plus, you've always been tech supporting for everyone for always. I've always been tech support for software engineers. I agree. And That's the best kind of person to support. Yeah. And, and so, so, so you, you mentioned high school. And so, like, you, you actually have a background in some of this tech stuff. A little bit, a little bit, and um, it was a lot of fun to take uh, computer science in high school, and when I went to St. Paul College for a little bit, um, I did have another computer science class, uh, mm-hmm. and, you know, you basically understand that nothing's new, everything's a Boolean, and everything is really complicated when you break it down really Yeah, and then it gets easier again. Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting that you say that. So, like, we went through uh, a regular AP computer science class many years ago. Um, and, of course, you've been talking to me over the last five... How many years have we been away? Uh, five years? Let's go with that. From Central? Uh, from regular show talk. Oh, yeah, yeah, about five. Yeah. So, so over the past um, long time, you've still been talking with me, and I've still told you about coding things and programming things. Oh, yes. Uh, and I've been working professionally in the industry now for a few years. And so we have had discussions on these things, even though you might not have had full context, you've still been exposed. So I think that despite what you might think, you are further ahead than you might know because you've still been exposed to a lot of this stuff. Um, and also you've been researching since you uh, kind of started this journey already about just all sorts of stuff. Which is six months from now. We'll be at. So you picked a six-month boot camp. So why why did you do that? Oh, for one obvious reason. I am still working full-time at the post office. Yep. Um, and that's a very reasonable thing to do. So the U of M offers a six-month and a, what, three-month? There also is a three-month, but that is... Um, full-time. Yeah, it is full-time. So it's every day of the week. Same, same price. Same price yep. point. So, and, if, and from what I've, what I've read, um, you know, it, it it's, uh, seems like... So quite a few of the U of M students that actually go to the U of M as an undergrad, they seem to also take some of these um, regular, you know, three month courses. Um, well, they offer a discount to alumni, right? So it, it's kind of a kind of a good deal for some people. Um, the The twelve month curriculum is identical to the full time curriculum, so I mean, it's just spread out more. Exactly. And that gives you time to gel on things. It does. Sometimes when you read something, you're like, eh, and then um, you sleep on it, and then you wake up and like, oh, that was silly. How did I not see that? Yep. And that happened. And you, I've told you about this. Like I, we, we were doing a show many times, and I said it doesn't work. I don't know what to do. And I would come back to you the next day, and like, yeah, I finished that. I was an idiot for not knowing it. Yeah, I can't believe just the worst code I've ever written. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing I'll say about that is I've actually been working on some curriculum for work also. And one of the things that I told the team was that people will on average learn like three primary points per lesson and that's it. Like 
spreading that work out, the more time you get, the more things people will learn. Like, yeah. time is the deciding factor there. You should always build off of what you did the day before. Yep. And, you know, try to do some integrations with those things. So so what what kind of stuff is in your boot camp? So, like, is it a Python boot camp, Java, Rust? Um, it is a very, very heavily JavaScript-based Oh, the one camp. I didn't even name. Yes. Hmm. Uh, but uh, later on, it looks like we do spend two weeks with uh, Java. That's good. So I, I have the curriculum up here a little bit. So let's see. What do we have? Uh, APIs, what? JSON. Seems pretty reasonable. Yep. Uh, you get some uh, server side experience using uh, a database. Do you know what kind of database? Uh, looks like MySQL, which uh, would make the one of the other shows on the network cry that we're not using Postgres. That's true. The fact that you know what Postgres is means you're already ahead of the query. Uh, it looks like we are going to go over some Node.js. Node yep, that's good. Very, very reasonable place to start. You know your uh, programming experience. Well, because nothing in production these days are just, is just straight up vanilla JavaScript. It's just, no. everyone's got some kind of Angular, Vue, React, or yep, something. Absolutely. And so, I mean, we the goal is to get a job at the end of this. Um, I do hope to switch jobs by the end of this year. That's a good goal. Um, so there, I see that there's um some computer science fundamentals. So that looks like some design patterns, algorithms. You're gonna get to learn uh bubble sort again. Uh, yeah, that was the. When I took the computer science at the St. Paul College, same merge sort, bubble sort, yeah, everything of course. else. But except you'll only have two days to learn it. So, like, I guess that's... Yeah, you know, we're, we're spending more time on um, HTML and getting your environment set up than we are on uh, actual algorithms. Yeah, that's okay. So I see that there's a final project. Do you know what that's about? Nope, 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 nope. They are super secretive. You can't work ahead. Mm -hmm. And um, That's a bummer. Yes, because I kind of want to... I want to know what I was buying before I bought it. Yeah, and totally. I had to fork over the 1000 That's that's It started to be $11,000 to yes. take this course. Right. So, I, you know, it, it's too bad that you don't get to know what the... Uh project will really be like but it do you know if it's a group project or solo nope no, no idea i do know that this is um very peer-to-peer -peer thing because in the real world you don't do a whole lot by yourself you're doing parts yeah. in little teams you are usually working in teams and that team experience is really powerful um you know you can program as much as you want on your own but one of the things you'll find is that you just can't do everything there's just not enough time and there's not enough know-how because you're telling me you just got added to somebody else's project. Yep. So you don't even get to be part of the entire cycle of exactly. a piece of software because you're you're in, you're out, you're moving. Yep. Um so you need to be able to communicate with others. That's right. So what are you, what are you hoping to build? Like, you know, I built a podcasting network you kind sure of with did. my uh my skills, although I didn't go to school for building a podcasting network. So like hey, what are you freak. Yeah, I know. You just make everything so like what are you hoping to build like what 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 do you have that you want to make i you might not have it yet. have nothing the only thing on my desires right now is to kind of like make um so i bought the domain name for matthewpetrel.com and i kind of want to have it like so you know how people sometimes link to their github thing and they have all their projects and well i want to you know my name attached to it like mm -hmm. my own brand and so by the end of this i want a brand i want a, my own website but I don't have any, I can't really go out and do that because what I'm going to put on it right now, I have nothing. Hopefully, these projects that I do during class will be something I can post on my website by the end of it and hopefully have a presence I can be proud of. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, one of the things that I'll say as advice to you um, from the recruiting perspective is that, you know, I won't look at your boot camp projects on GitHub because I can tell. But I will look at your novelty projects that you make yourself. Like you, everybody can look at the to-do app and say, yeah, that's a boot camp one. I don't care. That's a joke. But if you make something yourself, like something novel that helps serve your own needs with some, even if it's not very complex, like that, that code is what we'll look at. Yeah. And you've been doing that forever. Like the fluff driver for your, your Facebook yeah. scraper, your Farmville or egg hatch or whatever. Yep, and exactly. Uh, your Digimon click hack. Oh, boy. Gotta hatch that egg. Oh, man, you, I got blocked. You've been making blocked. little scrapers and other things for decades. Uh, decade. A, de a decade. A decade. A decade. 
Um, but you've always had little projects like that, and right. I've always been um, on GitHub. Yeah. Or Bitbucket or GitLab. Your war game's been on oh, there yeah. since like 2010. Yeah, oh my um, gosh, the legacy. But, uh, yeah. Well, actually, I did see one project in week seven. It was a rock, paper, scissors game. Rock, but paper, scissors. But I don't scissors. know anything about it. I don't know if it's supposed to be like player versus player, player versus computer, computer versus computer for a thousand iterations. I, I just... I just saw that there was a five-minute-long video segment about you submitting your homework. It'd be really cool if you were making, like, rock, paper, scissors. I guess I was wondering, could that be my war game? It'd be really cool if you could make rock, paper, scissors, but, like, make it a two-player thing, and then use, like, a database to store the moves. And That? That'd be really cool. That would be cool. That would be a little... That wouldn't be very hard. Like, you could do it. It'd yeah. Be, that'd be kind of a fun little extension project. Yes. Um, so I found out that the TAs do all the grading. That's cool. And so the, my professor, Brian, does not. Well, I'm happy for Brian yeah. that he gets the easy job. Well, I'm just, um, I'm used to the teacher doing the grading. So you, that's a good point. So the, the, there's homework, or is it just project-based, or what well, is it? Well, <laughs> speaking of homework, there is some pre-work I am supposed to have done before then, but it says not required, and I'm going to blow it off because I... Um... That's a good way to start your new class. You know, to be honest, I think that they're going to think I'm some arrogant dumbass that's going to be the guy who asks questions every five seconds because I didn't do the homework first. That's okay. You can just ask me the questions. But, yeah, I think I'm just going to go. the same thing. Wait, no, it's... maybe... Uh, that's okay. Uh, the homework physically said not required, so... Yes, this assignment is not required and has not been submitted. Well, see, now we have it in audio proof. It's still running, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it can't be changed, right? So the blockchains mm-hmm. work. Yeah. And so do you know if there's, like, any exams or anything? Quizzes? No. Um, so the way how this is graded, there's two different segments to the score. Um, so you have your academic section, which mm-hmm. is all your projects for the next six months. And also they have your um, career completion thing. Mm-hmm. They have milestones they want you to reach. Uh, like the first milestone is just simple, like make a LinkedIn. Uh, okay. And then so they have these ways to help you get through. And allegedly, I don't know if it's based out of the University of Minnesota or Trinity Schools in New York City with the where this curriculum is. The U did not design this curriculum. Mm -hmm. Um, Trinity Schools did. So it's kind of like one of those um, franchise kind of things. Yes, but um, it's being taught by university staff and TAs. So it's it's not completely boilerplate. Everyone's doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So there's totally going to be a University of Minnesota-ness to it. That's good. So you get some gophers, some maroon and gold. Exactly. I get this big letter M on the upper left section of my login screen on there the you. boot camp Moodle thing. thing. Yeah. Which apparently you can run on localhost, according to the videos. Eh. Eh. Yeah. So, um, so when, when do you start? So this is, what is those, the week of? The week of the January 7th? Yep. When do you start? Tuesday. Tuesday the what? Uh, I think it's the 15th. Today is the 11th, correct? I don't um You know, y- you are known for asking the hard questions. Yes, it I verified it is the 15th at the 6:30. Great. So you start next week and um you're pretty excited, huh? I am. Um I got a understanding with my boss now. He knows that I'm ready to quit over this and he's willing to work with me. That's good. Um, and so and so you said that there were two days of classes and then a weekend. Correct. See, not only did I not see what I was buying with the projects and all the other things, I signed up for night classes. I paid for, I put down my first $2,500 and then I was given my schedule because I told him on to the Tuesday, Thursday. Mm-hmm. And so I thought it was just two days a week and I figured there was going to be like 20 hours of homework, like they said. Right. And then there was the shocking surprise, the 1030 a.m. Saturday class. So my nighttime classes include Saturday mornings. Yeah, that's tough. Well, so my boss is allowing me to come to work, punch in, work for a few hours, punch out to lunch, 
for four hours of class plus drive time. So I figure it's got to be at least five hours. Basically. Then punch back in. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how long you last. Well, my customers are very old and very impatient. They are going to be upset with me delivering their mail at 6 o'clock at night. I think you're going to be upset with yourself delivering mail at that time. Yes, of yes, yes. But I... um, It's for a better cause. This is, yeah, this is this is my goal. Yeah. I don't have to risk anything to take this course. Mm-hmm. I keep everything. I keep my and, job. And I don't I have think, to burn up my sick leave. And you get a lot of experience doing it, too. So, like... You've worked at the post office for uh, post office for how long? Uh, January twentieth will be six years. So you've worked for six years. You know, one of the things that I often tell, um, you know, other people doing interviews is that like there's a person who hasn't worked before, a person who hasn't worked in the industry before, and somebody who has. And you know, a college grad, they've never had a real job. Like they might have oh, had, yeah. like if you've had an internship, like that gets pretty close, but. Having worked somewhere for six years, like that's a line of dedication that's pretty uncommon in the software engineering industry. So people will look really well on that. Well, I'm hoping so. Yep. Um, well, because, you know, I know some people will scoff at it, but I like mail, you know, mailman's fun. Yeah. Um, it shows that I. It's uh, just a lot of work. It is. Um, it that's means not I can to pass say a that. background check and everything else. I had to give. So when you showed up for work, did you have to stick your fingers in wax? No. Yeah. When you sign, when you work for the post office, they take your fingerprints and everything else. But if you work and... for the Fed, then you do. Yeah. I don't. Every time you change positions in the post office, like when I got when I went from the temporary person to the full time person, fingers in wax again, put the red powder dye on top, and because it could change. Yeah. Well, allegedly, they want to verify that you didn't do it for somebody else, and you didn't try to identity swap. I don't understand it. Uh, but they got four sets of my prints now. That's good. I'm sure they're going to use those wisely. We'll see. Yeah. But uh, the government has to be open to use them. That's true. Huh, that's a good one. So there's, um, what, 23 more weeks of this? 24 more weeks? Yes, because this hasn't officially started. Yep. So I figure there'll be 25 episodes of this show. So one of the things that we'll be doing here in boot camp is... You know, Matt, mocking and humiliating me? No, actually, being constructive with you. Oh, that—that uh, that will be the byproduct. Yeah, of your entertainment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no. So, before all of this started, Matt came to me with a bunch of questions about what I do, and I love talking about myself. So, well, because y- your job is totally different. I can't even begin to explain how different. Totally different. Um, and and so all of these questions really made me want to talk about them in a recorded format because that's what we love doing here, right? And uh, this is a good way to, you know, maybe help somebody else through their boot camp. And... Or whether or not they even want to. Want to, because at the end, did I blow eleven grand, or did right. it change my life forever? It's, yeah. We'll see what happens. And I understand that every human being is their own human being. Uh, every, no, nobody's going to have the same story twice. Right. I'm going to have a different experience as the next guy. Yep, but we can we can change that story, potentially, by offering this nice podcast. Yes. Yes. That's how it works. Or um, we hope. And so you'll, you'll be bringing questions uh, in future episodes and... Uh, you know, you'll be talking about your time in your boot camp. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'll be uh, telling you about how those things relate to the real world. Yeah. Because uh, two three-hour-long classes and then one four-hour-long class a week, so. I mean, it's a yeah. lot of hours. I mean, you're going to have questions. Yes, I know. And I am also playing with Fire. See, I have Windows 10 with a custom launcher on that um, I don't know if I'm going to fit in well with the class so i you know for perspective on that you actually know what ubuntu is <laughs> yeah one of the you installed it yourself you physically replaced a hard drive yourself I, I feel like at some point you're not giving yourself enough credit here mike because i know that spinning drives suck yes and you also know that installing that SATA operating systems is old is even easy. sata 3 is just it, it, pci 4x M.2 boards. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, so I can bench my drive. Like, I was getting, like, 3.5 gigahertz... Gig- <laughs> gigabyte reads. So, it's so much faster than having a drive over SATA. I agree. And... I like Ubuntu a lot. Um, it just, you know, development is just so much easier on a Linux system. Um, it's just... 
I mean, I, I can't say enough about it. I sincerely, sincerely did my best to give Windows 10 a chance. You did. And you were asking me to check out the Nexus Core's repo. And so I, I, I cloned it, got everything, and I installed Docker, downloaded the image, waited for it to go, got halfway through the install, and then I was struck. And I was hit with, hey, you're not using Windows Pro. You can't use Docker. Insert $99 American right now. Yep, and so we said no. Instead, you inserted how much to Amazon? $77 plus tax and one day shipping. Okay, so... So 80 bucks. So a delta of about $10. But But, I got a faster drive. And you got Linux. Yes. Um, And and so we all know that Macs are the premier development workstation, but... They come with a premium price tag. They do, and you don't need that until you actually get to work work. And hopefully they buy it for me. Exactly. Hopefully they do. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, pretty much does it here for episode zero of In Boot Camp. Do you have anything else? No, and I think that's uh, it's pretty good. Going to be a good journey. So uh, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me not a whole lot of places right now. I just have a Twitter, and I don't even know what it is. I think... So is that bad? No, no. See, there's a story about that, um, but you'll have to tune in on the French to hear that story. Um, oh, the, the, wow. your Twitter handle is Matt Petchel with no underscore anymore. I'm pretty sure. Yes, uh, I'm not much of a tweeter though. You're not today, but when you get all those funny JavaScript questions, you will be. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite places to ask questions is on Twitter. And not you get answers. Stack Overflow. Or no, I hate that place. place. It's very, vi- very vile. So the place where people go for help with code is the place that people shouldn't go. They should just go to Twitter where you should be talking about your coffee. Exactly. You know, why not? The world is different than what you perceive, and that's what we're here for. Well, I think that's the end of episode zero then. Yep. Have a good one. Bye-bye. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV. Podcasts from from the the Technological technological Convergence. Convergence.